Uh, welcome everybody. We'll start the uh, elected committee board meeting, and I'll start with uh, up here. Hey, Te Atua, Anakitia Maiti Naihui, Alagina Mai Mato Koriro, A O Mato Kapano, Ia Tuki Tuki Aita Mato, Ifaine Ake Ake Amene. We have any apologies to start with, I think we're all here, so we're all good. Okay, well, the first item on the agenda is uh, Report 7.1 uh, about uh, voting uh, for a board chair and other appointments. Um, and so the first thing we need to vote on is the system of voting, and the report recommends uh, uh, System B. So do um, we have a mover and second uh, for items one and two of the resolution, like receiving this report? System B. Right. Board member uh, Hutt. <laughs> Second by uh, Councillor Maru. All those in favour, please say aye. No. Carry. Right. We'll move to number three. Uh, I'll get the chairperson. Do we have any nominations for the chairperson, please? I would like to. Seconder. Thank you. Um, any other nomination? I think we'll declare uh, board member Armstrong, Chair of Motorway Community. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Sorry. All those in favour, please say no. <laughs> no, carry. <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> Apologies for that. I hand over to you now. Richard, for those who don't know, this is Richard Kirby, who's um, one of the senior executives in ABC, um, whose job was to start the meeting off with that chair. Come on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick up the agenda as I find the bits that came to me. My computer isn't working for um, all the um, agendas and things, so I'm working with bits of paper, which I probably. Our uh, first job for me then is to um, elect a deputy chair. Sorry, yeah. Deputy chair, so I have four nominations for a deputy chair. We'd like to have a chair. I'll second that. Any other nominations? Case. Um, all those in favour? Move it, Graham, the deputy chair. Aye, aye. Yes, Terry. And so, um, those of the way to get the we're done, we can go on to the public forum. Um, now, the rules of the public forum 
Sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> the rules of the public forum are the five minutes maximum. Um, there's about derogatory comments and things like that. But, uh, otherwise, it's you personally speaking to speak for up to five minutes. Um, and friends or members don't um, respond in any way. They ask questions for clarification. So the first person I've got down here, Rich, is Kevin Corey. Okay. I'd like to cover them perhaps clean over here, maybe, so you can address the crowd and back to their heads. Where's the next door? Thank you, board members, and uh, welcome to a three year term. The value is that uh, we're all going to be together for quite a long time, so we're all going to get to know each other well enough. And I trust that the, some of the members on the other side of the channel will take on board with enthusiasm what they were dealing out before the last changeover. And enthusiasm, enthusiasm themselves, and it worked really well. So I'm going to switch into the chair, if I may. Is it five minutes per topic or five minutes in total? Okay. Quick. Brent Murray will know, Councillor Brent Murray will know about this one. It's the Chosen Post trial, which we did get in, in, in together for the um, members of the public. Um, if you who are the bikers in the group? Bikers at the Tasman Post trial, the view right at the top was getting really hot. So after much hurrying, we got the new shade, shade sail put up. However, we went up there, tomorrow you'll see it in the newspaper. So we were celebrating, and when we looked up, we saw that the rocks were done such that you could easily still take out the pin and walk away with a beautiful new state trail, dark blue, game over, and story. So, Councillor Mario, did you speak with Mr. Kirby about that one? Yeah, it's all Okay, it's all good. The second one I would refer to, I I come yeah. from Africa, from South Africa, and we were we started an African appreciation group. Uh, because one thing you find it if you've got a couple of languages, if you don't practice those languages, you feel somewhat just just combobulated. If that's the word. So we've had three meetings, and uh, one of the resources that hasn't been forthcoming I've requested is to have a resource, an Afrikaans resource kit. Maybe a shelf on the library or part thereof, so that people who express interest. We've had three meetings now, two really successful, one didn't happen. Um, Whether it was good, I suppose. And so we can have a resources kit for people who want to learn the language and or those who want to practice the language. Uh, we could then follow through. So at the last meeting, we had four people, uh, but we don't have a resource to refer to, to read at, at the beginning, to start emulating what's happening with the so uh, I have spoken with uh, Janine and it's a little bit stone wall is saying it's not going to happen. So I find that a little bit um, off centre because if you want to promote a language, you need resources to do that. Otherwise, we might as well take it out all English and we won't be able to go that where that leads to. So the request is to have a, investigate the resource kit for the Upper Council Appreciation Group to proceed further because it's just popular. We'd like to increase popularity. I'm done. Thank you. Any questions? Any, any questions? Thanks very much, Kevin. Uh, next bit of the speaker is what we can use here. This is your library, and I believe it's a so I think that's five minutes. Can I take a bit more? <laughs> um, I just feel I mean, I'd just like to um, I'm Chris Sutton and I'm the chairperson of the Waterwekan District Museum Trust Board. Um, I'd just like to start by acknowledging and saying a big thank you to David Ogilvy, who has been the TVC representative on the Trust Board since the time I've been on it and certainly a uh, many, many years before that amazing guy, um, as you all know, and his contribution and um, his support, we have been truly blessed. Um, 
Mars of Ashen again, that's of the um, the use of the old um, the, the old library. Uh, and if you don't mind, I'm going to read from the notes. I only knew yesterday afternoon about this meeting and I've had to pay bridge and mow the lawns and everything else in between time. So if you don't mind if I just read from the um, from my notes rather than to speak um, off the top of my head because I don't want to lose anything. The, uh, the Mordeca District Museum Trust has a critical need for a purpose building for storage space. It has grown so much, uh, the museum has grown so much since it, its inception that not only do we now attract international exhibitions, but the number of local people offering goods to the museum has grown exponentially. As we have previously submitted to Council, the visitors we are experiencing are growing yearly. One of our duties as a museum is to save artifacts for the next generation. Therefore, they must be treated and stored correctly. This means packaging, decisioning, and storage. All of these stages require their own space. One of the principles of collecting artifacts in Mauriaco is that it must have local provenance and be directly relevant to the economic or social aspects of the town and district. And that there is only one sort of each type collected so that not everything offered is accepted, meaning that every artifact and storage is unique and local. The museum has long since run out of space within the confines of the building, especially as the artifices cannot be on, this, be on display at any one time, so the need for storage arises. We now have the equivalent of four garages. We've been for the support with that by TDC and increasing our grant, but which we rent and also volunteer storage, all in at least four different parts of Mauriaca. This is time consuming and expensive to access as well as being totally unsuitable for long-term storage. We cannot continue storage in this haphazard fashion. It's also a health and safety concern for the trust board. We would like to again press to have the vacated ex library in Power Street to solve our storage problem. We also see it can be used for relocating the Mortimeca Historical Association that is currently sharing our museum space, also giving them more work space. Uh, they can be used for local exhibitions, art gallery, and displays. Having, um, oh, I was going to say, having our, I thought, our much loved Cadillac on display, but David tells me there's no room for it. Um, if we don't get the old library, we will be asking. Um, I'd like to say expecting that TDC provide land and a purpose built storage facility as they did the toy library and the senior net buildings, both of which the TDC purpose built to fulfill a need. We note that the TDC provided money for the Nelson Provincial Museum for storage space. So we are, we are assured that the need and the importance of museum storage is clearly understood by the council, and the same thinking will also apply for the TDC's own area museum. In summary, the need for storage space is now critical. If we do not get this space, we will need to refuse to accept any more artifacts and will thereby permanently lose our local history. The Mordoreca District Museum Trust Board are willing to apply for grants to help outfit the interior and help with any earthquake problems that might arise. Thank you. Um, we have uh, Deb. Hello, well, everyone. Um, for folks who couldn't make it today, so I'm going to be reading some notes. Julie, off the cuff. 
I am here to be a voice for the youth of this community. Um, we are asking for a youth hub and time <coughs> is pretty much now. We talked about it's been promised for many, many years and people who were youth back in the day are now adults with their own children and we are still waiting for what a youth centre. Um, investment in our youth is critically important. You invest in your youth, and you give them time and energy and somewhere safe to go and a place to connect and to learn and to grow and create strong communities. We are, we are wanting the world to work like as well. Um, it's central, it's a safe spot, it's got bathrooms, it's got kitchen facilities, we need to be able to offer food to our youth. Um, I've heard this $300,000. Um, earthquake strengthening. Um, we still want that building. I think it's important. I think it's time that um, our representatives did something for our youth. Um, we have people who are willing to volunteer. We have people who are willing to do research. We have people. We have people willing to do what needs to be done to make this a reality. Um, we're not expecting you to do it on your own. You know, we know you guys have got a big job. So we are asking for this to happen. We are asking for it to happen now. We would like to see a youth hub open next year. I don't think it's feasible to tell a youth that they are so unimportant that they are still not going to get a place where they can go and be safe. So um, we are asking to please get on board. Um, with our people, we are willing to collaborate. We need to make this happen. Someone suggested the big centre. Um, while it makes sense, the objection we have with the rec centre is that it's too far away for um, kids to be able to access it. It's not safe then to leave there and walk back into town at night time. We need this space because it's central. Um, and we are prepared to share. There are several other groups who have said that they uh, want this space as well. Um, Super Grands has mentioned the Mighty Women's Welfare League. We don't see why there can't be a space put aside for people to use those facilities during the day. It will mainly be after school, it will be weekends, and it will be school holidays. So, um, yeah, we are asking for you please to work favorably on this request. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Any questions? I do have a question. So, question. Sorry. Sorry. So, in terms of um, talk us. Who's us? Is there a formal group as it's established yet? It's a, it's a formal group, but it's still growing. Um, we only formed three weeks ago, yeah. so we're still working on it. There's a lot of people who have put out their hands and said, yes, we're in, yeah. but they're more talking about volunteering their time once the centre is set up. A lot of people are time poor, as you know. Everyone's working, everyone's got um, children, they've got weekend hobbies and sports, so it's very difficult to get people together at the same time. But there are a lot of people who are saying yes. So would the group be similar to the last presentation we had in terms of seeking funding to help the people? Absolutely. Funding, um, sponsorship from local businesses. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you, Thank you. That's the end of the public forum. Um, we're going to pop the full meeting now. Um, wasn't before, and it is now. Um, I should feel, I feel first that I want to um, welcome people. Um, several people here for the council, got a big team, we make, always make a forward pack here, council members, um, and another one coming shortly. Um, council Mailing, Jason Ward, appreciate you being here. Uh, and Deputy Chair of the Golden Bay Community Board, Grant Knowles. Uh, normally, he's attended meetings in the past uh, three years and normally we come up to the table and we're speaking of the not voting role, but today we are a bit packed, so I won't do it this time. Um, welcome to all this. Um, in terms of me being uh, elected as Chair, I have a very, very, very tough act to follow. Uh, in the last six years of Councillor Arnold, who been in that role, um, I certainly 
quick be as quick off the mat and uh, sort of quick thinking and be able to navigate multiple paths and things just anywhere there as well as he is, I'm sure. Um, and I would also um, know that I don't have the, the depth and width of the context and the in and the videos and in government uh, agencies and so forth. So um, let's go do our best. Um, look, welcome to the community board members, the new ones. Welcome to Nina. Yeah, yeah it's all up. Is that the end of the public submission process? Oh, sorry. Yes. Is that the end of the public submission process, please? Yes, there's a form to fill out. Uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, TDC's publication of this meeting, it said nothing about going to register to speak. Nor did it actually then. But it's a bit concerned that the locks is getting sat up on here. Going through normal procedure, it is for that to happen for the year. But um, I suppose that the after the three speakers we had, I could have asked if there was our other people who hadn't put their names down and wished to, to speak. Well, there's no requirement to put your name down. Okay, well, in that case, can I yeah, tell us your name and your um, okay. My name is Paul Dixon Video. Uh, appearing here as an individual. I've been a resident of Monterey for 49 years. My particular concerns with this um, council today relate to the um, environment. Uh, perhaps it's wrong to attend this meeting with a sense of negativity, uh, but I believe there is little cause for optimism in the Tasman region environment whilst TDC continues to ignore overwhelming scientific evidence regarding the degradation caused by siltation in our rivers, estuaries, and marine environments. For over 20 years, there's been a growing body of evidence alluding to the harmful environmental and economic impacts of sedimentation caused by erosion, slope failures, etc., directly attributable to clear fell forestry activities carried out on a rotational basis, particularly on separation point granite geological zones. This research has been carried out and there have been publications by NIWA, by Landcare Research, by Cawthorne Institute, and by Department of Conservation. These are all very august bodies. These, their findings are not challenging. I've been involved in environment advocacy in this region for over 30 years, initially through Fish and Game New Zealand. This included my efforts towards the, the Gazette of the Monowaker One Water Conservation Order and the Buller Water Conservation Orders and Tributaries. And subsequently, as a submitter on several TDC public consultation processes, attended public meetings where I raised these issues, and as a submitter on planning consent applications. I applaud the Gisborne District Council, which took successful environment court action against forestry owners, which sent a clear message that under the existing RMA, this legislation has only been in place for 31 years, there is unquestionable scope for councils to take action to hold forest companies to account for damage caused by slash and debris. I've been involved with much of my career in enforcement and compliance through the court system, and there will be no compliance without consequences. I believe the community has had enough of TDC's inaction. The council now needs to face public scrutiny through the environment for the result of action being taken by the Environmental Defence Society. This was published in the paper only two weeks ago, and I hope you're all aware of this. This is a considerable contingent risk for the council and the community board. I urge TDC to stop the rot now and take immediate action to do all in its powers to stop activities that result in slope failures, sedimentation and runoff, which has already destroyed the Otaferu estuary and critically threatened the Motueka, Mutri, the Waimea, Takika, Mochipiko, Duwaka, Estuaries and Tasman Bay. Sedimentation has been proven to be the result cause of the collapse of the scallop industry. The Cawthorne Institute research says that the mussel industry is also under an extreme threat because suspended sediment suppresses the growth of phytoplankton. As you know, mussels are filter feeders and the mussel industry is under jeopardy. There's no excuse for ignoring the science, folks. It's been out there for nearly 30 years. The TDC cannot keep turning a blind eye to the fact that the bay out there has been destroyed, the benthic environment, the seabed, 
is just now a shifting sediment and silt, and there's sediment in, in the suspended sediment in the water column. It is just not acceptable in this day to continue to have a blind eye to this environment degradation. This is the biggest environmental disaster on the top of the South Island. Uh, I've got a file several inches thick at home um, regarding this issue, but I just wanted to take a couple of press releases that have come to mind. Um, yeah, the $379,000 fine um, obtained by the Gisborne District Council due to forestry slash. Seagrass disappears from the estuary. Seagrass, an important habitat for many invertebrates and fish, appears to have disappeared from the Montecubo estuary in Golden Bay, says Tasman District Council Resource Scientist Trevor James. Nelson Mail, 30th May 2022. Protected fishery nursery wiped out by mud. The fish nursery established in 1980 off Able Tasman National Park has been destroyed by sediments coming off the land. A preliminary review of data has been found. The environmental damage by the siltation is unquestionable, and yet we continue to allow the destruction of our environment through rotational forest. And there are practices, even with the forestry accord, there are practices we have implemented now to stop clear felling, protect the environment, because that's the separation point granite, there is no other option but to stop the rotational down disturbance. And the harmful environmental effects are just unquestionable. And it's within your power to think, not in terms of a five year or a 10 year plan, but 50 years. I've got three grandkids in this town who are eighth generation Motomaker residents. I'm tired of trying to fight these environmental issues and set for their future is my main concern. But I'm pleased, I urge you to do everything in your power address the substantive issue. There's no point in playing around in riparian planting and estuary or, or helping farmers fix culverts. We've got a substantive issue there, the bay, and I think it's over 760 square kilometers of the bay is under extreme environmental threat. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, everybody. Yeah, so I'm just here to um, to present a mini example of um, heard this skill before uh, we've had presentations uh, from um, uh, Barry Johnson on the 25th, I think it was, um, going over some of the feedback. And I think many of the um, four members of the Indian councillors were present. Uh, but just to introduce myself, I'm Jeremy Butler. I am the team leader for the Urban and Rural uh, Policy Team. So I work with Barry Johnson uh, and uh, Lisa McGlinchey, the other team leader of the Natural Resources Team. Uh, I'll cover some of her content today. So just to give you a quick bit of background. Um, we are currently in the early stages of a round of engagement for the Tasman Environment Plan. It's our second round of engagement. I'll go through this in a bit more detail. Tasman Environment Plan is a really big, big project to replace our current uh, TRMP, Tasman Resource Management Plan. Actually, I've got a slide on this, so I'll flip forward. So let's, let's go off the next slide. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so today really I just want to give you that background context, which I'll, I'll expand on in a second, and then go over the, um, the, the the three key documents that I've put in front of you here, um, and presenters are out of date. Barry, I was coming over anyway, so um, so I, I offered to Barry that I could do the presentation. Z. Okay, next slide. Yes. Okay, so just a little bit of background on the uh, Tasman Environment Plan and what that is. So currently, uh, we work under the Resource Management Act. Uh, under the Resource Management Act, we, uh, we've recently completed a future development strategy. Actually, technically, that's not done in the Resource Management Act, but it's very, very relevant to it. And then we have to prepare a regional policy statement and a resource, and resource management plans. Now, they are the big blue book, which I think are in the room here, um, but you'll have all seen them, I'm sure. And it's essentially the rule book for TASMA. What type of things you can do, you can't do? What can your neighbours do? What can your neighbours not do? Where do we live? How do we live? How do we protect the environment? All that sort of stuff. And under that, we have structure plans, and they're sort of non statutory documents that guide uh, those higher level plans. And that can be differentiated from the Local Government Act. I'm sort of going back to basics here, um, as we're early in the term, um, which contains uh, a, a wide range of other documents that, uh, that, that Council's clearly involved in, but that's not really what our team does. We are around the Resource Management Act. Uh, so I just want to make that. That, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions on that, but I'm certainly not an expert in this space here. There's others in the room who are. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, so it's just important to flag, and as it turns out, the first two of these have actually dropped, use the lingo, uh, today. So we've actually now just got um, the draft uh, of the National and Built Environments Act and the Strategic Planning Act, which are going to replace the RMA. They've actually just been released today by the Minister. Uh, and we're also waiting for the Climate Adaption Act. Now, under those acts, we will be moving to, we, we're going to, combined with Nelson City Council, we will have to produce an RECs, which will essentially replace the future development strategy. And we'll have to still produce a, a, a district plan, let's call it. We're currently calling it the Tasman Environment Plan, but again, we've been directed just recently, in the last few weeks, months, uh, that that will also need to be combined with Nelson City Council's plan. So what we call it, I'm not exactly sure yet. And again, under that, we'll have those non-statutory structure plans. So that's sort of the, that's the future, um, and that's that's where we're going to. So just to give you that background. And as I said, it replaces those big blue books uh, which we've got there. Um, the our new Tasman Environment Plan, combined with Nelson, will replace both the RPS and the TRMP. Um, yeah, a bit more on that. Yes, please. Next one. Okay. So in terms of the program that we've got, we kicked off. Uh, the review of our TRMP about three or four years ago. In 2020, we did a round of sort of high level engagement, just saying, you know, what uh, blue sky stuff, you know, what, what's the future, what do you want to see, what's important to you, and so on. This time back in 22, 23, we're doing our second round of engagement. In the intervening time, our policy team has gone away and done a lot of work looking at um, what's, you know, what we got in the first round, what's the evidence, what works, what doesn't work, what are the really key policy decisions we need to make. There's a lot of aspects where it was clear that there needed, needed to be changes. There's a lot of areas where we couldn't make any changes for various reasons. But it's, uh, in the middle, there's a big chunk of issues which we identified. We worked through with councillors over uh, a couple of, well, I could say 18 months worth of workshops, and we got down to what are some of the really crunchy policy issues we needed feedback on from, the, uh, from councillors, community boards, and from the public. So that's what we're asking in this round two. Uh, and then round three will be coming back. Well, the NBA is kind of throwing this up, but uh, in, into the air a wee bit. But there will be um, subsequent stages of engagement also. Uh, so three documents I've put in front of you. Uh, the, the big 
big blue one is uh, kind of our overall document. That's uh, that number one, managing Tasman's environment and development. Now that covers, um, oh, I'll go through what that covers in a second. Uh, I've given you a one sheet on towns and villages. We've produced that one sheet for each of our uh, towns and villages with a couple of exceptions, uh, but, but generally speaking, all of them. And we've got a mountain to the sea document, which I'll explain shortly too. Okay, so the first one. Um, what this document covers, if you go through it, it covers a whole range of quite discrete issues that are covered in it. And in each case, it gives what are the options, well, sorry, what are the issues that we've identified and what are the options, the policy response options we've got to deal with that. Uh, one of them, the, the first one I think is in the book, is around our regionally significant issues. This is sort of arguably a, a, a technical thing. We have to, under the Act, we have to identify what are our regionally significant issues. Previously, they would have been in our uh, RPS, our regional policy state. So in, a, in addition to the existing ones we've got, we're um, proposing to add climate change, urban growth and infrastructure, and community wellbeing. And there's obviously some content that goes with that. The next one. Uh, another thing that's identified in that big blue book there is uh, the work we've done on our ONFLs and on our coastal environment. Now we've in Mofueka and Gong Bay and down Murchison, so we've done a lot of work on the ONFLs. We've worked with all the landowners, and that work is very well advanced, to the point where we've actually been able to identify in that document some concept rules for those topics there, earthworks, quarrying, and mining. What sort of level of, that, of earthworks, quarrying, and mining should we be allowing in our ONFLs, and what should be more restricted, and what may not be allowed at all. Buildings and structures, again, what sort of buildings and structures and might be allowed and under what sort of conditions and plantation forestry uh, a, a lot in, in order to sort of protect those important environments um, those precious environments to us OFFLs and our coastal environment so there's content on those draft rules um, it then goes on to our urban areas so uh, it talks about sort of in a general sense how do our urban areas function what are the, the really key issues we've got and I've identified them there uh, that uh, we need uh, more of a variety of homes, a variety of sites for businesses. Um, affordability is a key issue, accessibility, uh, supporting reductions in carbon emissions from that sector, and also the resilience to natural hazards. And those are already identified, those are some of the key issues in our urban areas and some policy responses for, uh, for how we might deal with that. And in our rural areas, uh, again, we have uh, this. There's a bit of history of this because we did our Plan Change 60, which was our rural review, I don't know, five, six years ago. Uh, so there's some quite specific aspects here. And a, a key one is really about balancing rural living with reducing carbon emissions, because we know that living in rural areas does produce a lot of transport, and it does the evidence we've got is it produces a lot of carbon emissions. So uh, there has been calls for more rural living to allow our rural residential areas, rural residential zones to accommodate more people. That is in direct conflict with uh, the requirements we've got to reduce vehicle kilometres um, and carbon emissions. So we need feedback and input there. Um, and just some other aspects that are relevant around here too. Uh, our, our rules around accommodating workers, uh, quarries and commercial activities. Um, I'd also note that there's quite a significant change for the Rural 3 zone. Uh, so towards the back of that document there, the Rural 3 zone is, uh, which is relevant to my say roughly from Tasman uh, village through to the start of the Appleby Strait uh, and there's quite a significant change proposed in terms of uh, that, that rural three zone which I can go into more detail if people want if they're interested. Uh, and then that document goes through a number of other policy areas around light uh, with proposals for how to for protecting the night sky and um, glare between properties and so on and signs and notable trees historic heritage energy and infrastructure and transportation so uh, we're asking for nominations for additional notable trees that should be protected under the plan. Same for historic heritage. Uh, how can we promote more, um, well, protect, protection of, inf of important infrastructure and generation of local energy, renewable energy, which we're required to do. And transportation goes into a, a range of aspects to support the walking and cycling strategy the council's already done. Okay, so that's a very brief overview of that bigger document. Then we've gone through and done the towns and villages, which I've focused on not quite clearly, uh, but for all our towns and villages, it's been informed by the FDS. Uh, it's been, our assessments of the towns and villages have been informed by the community and e-reviews that we had in our, from our first round. 
Uh, climate change is considered sort of a core aspect of all of those towns and villages, and that our towns and villages are attractive and experiential. We know that there's going to be challenges with, uh, with retail into the future. I wouldn't say it's dead, but it's, it's, it's got its challenges. So uh, making our towns a great place to be so that people still want to come, even if they're not there to buy stuff, and that they're connected. That's an important aspect too. So for Motueka, the, the issues that have been identified are there. There's quite a list of them. Um, for Motueka particularly, around providing land for housing businesses is a, a significant uh, difficulty in the face of coastal hazards, stormwater limitations, and productive land. But that won't be, won't be nothing new there, I'm sure. Uh, we're all aware of those, those challenges. Uh, the risk of groundwater contamination from land uses has been identified also. Uh, and as Motueka continues to grow, there is a risk of insufficient facilities, and, and I've, I've just taken out some words there, but that's really around uh, recreation, community sort of facilities. Um, there's a loss of connectivity. If I, if I group all these together around connectivity, distinctive place of identity and character, and the shopping area, that elongation, so we're seeing challenges in the town centre due to that elongation, and some aspects around the urban form of it. And there's a risk that the town centre may not remain a, a, a focal that there's a risk of that sort of spread and not retaining the kind of core retail and um, commercial elements in the town centre. So we, there's something we need to look at and the choice of housing is limited. I've squeezed off to the bottom there. Uh, so in terms of the options um, that we're looking at for Motueka, uh, implementing the FDS is important and that really is focused on development west of High Street to avoid the, uh, the worst of the sea level rise challenges that we have. Uh, ensuring the town centre remains a central focus and, and as I say, there's various ways we can do that through policy uh, re and retaining the core pedestrian orientated area for that town centre. Uh, allowing greater level of buildings, potentially up to three storeys. Uh, and uh, there's been some discussion about whether we should be going higher than that for the inner town area, uh, potentially up to six storeys with resource consent, because often that will come down to the, the, appropriateness, the appropriateness of the location. Uh, maintaining the character of the high street shopping area sort of where possible and we are proposing to develop design guidance for all of our towns but it may be grouped into kind of coastal towns and inland towns as it were. Uh, for Rewalka, really the, the feedback we've had is that um, things are pretty good as they are. Uh, there's no real scope for development there but there is a need for just to support the small to medium scale commercial uh, nodes that we have already in Rewalka and potentially expand those um, to accommodate the activities that are occurring there. And really the, the bottom point there um, is a slightly loaded statement because uh, our coastal hazard project is yet to kind of come to fruition. We've released a lot of information around our coastal hazards, but in terms of uh, engaging on what are the responses to those coastal hazards, that's going to be a, a project for next year. So it's a little bit, <coughs> a little bit backwards, if you like, uh, um, in terms of discussing about week about that, but we just need to be very cognizant that we do have this challenge. Uh, of, of our coastal hazards. Jeremy, could, uh, I should ask to start. Do you want to make a question? Yeah, that's what we like. So, John. Thanks, Jeremy. Just got a couple of questions on this. Uh, where you've got retainer called pedestrian orientation area for Wash Worker, can you give a bit more detail on that? Yeah. Do you mean by the Sundial Square or um, what? what well, I oh, haven't gone into that level of detail, uh, but I think, I think it's important to say though that, um, so, so this is the start of some more detail uh, that, that we can develop because I am aware that we've got this reserved here. And in fact, as part of plan chain, numbers gone, sorry, um, a lot of the land actually around this reserve was rezoned commercial. But a lot of these houses around here are actually on commercial land. So it's, in a high level policy uh, level, it's around keeping a, a core walk, uh, pedestrian orientated um, location for commercial activities and to really keep that heart of the town. Now, where that exactly is and how that's exactly done, I'm not quite sure yet. We do have a lot of that commercial space, and the, the, um, how we implement this. And the hunt is something we'll have to work through. So there's a number of measures. So, so usually when you write on these plans, uh, the, the main implementation method that people think of is rules. So we have rules. If you do this as a activity, we need a resource consent for this. 
but, we, but there are other methods of implementation that can actually be through council funding, council projects, implementing uh, non, let's say non regulatory methods. And if the, uh, the opinion of people not to act out the community board and so on is that actually, um, well, it's to work very where is the core, where should the core be, and then work towards that. And that can be, you know, over years. But I think what we're just identifying there is we need a core somewhere. We, we shouldn't, it's not good town planning. It won't have good town planning outcomes to keep spreading along the main street as we've sort of done and potentially hollowing out the middle of it. It needs to be, for a town side model, it needs to be consolidated somewhere. And so how we do that, we just need to work through. So I haven't got all the answers there. That's what I think. Yes, yes. Just another question. With the um, maintaining the furniture upholstery and shopping, I don't have yeah. um, there's problems in the past where um, there's a fine line between the landlord yeah. and, and the TTC. So how how does the TTC maintain the character of the high street shopping area? How does TDC? Well, so yes, well, there's. Yeah, I guess we're mainly fo we're focusing on outcomes for the whole town and outcomes for private land too. So in terms of redevelopment, so what we can do, I'm not saying we, we will, we, we must, but an option is for us to provide design guidance for, so if there are buildings that are removed or new buildings built, then they actually uh, and it's depending how much carrot and how much sink, left and grabs, but you can have design guidance that say that you need to design your buildings in this way. And there's lots of examples of that. If you go along Rocks Road and Nelson, they've got a design guide for how those houses, those, well, those buildings along Rocks Road, so they're all a certain kind of era. And we've got design guides. Guides for uh, Richmond South, um, well, has been very successful. Uh, and um, so we can provide that kind of design guidance with a certain level of um, encouragement slash compulsion <laughs> if we need to, and it's really up for grabs. But in our experience so far, voluntary design guides aren't particularly successful. So some strong carrots or sticks are often required if that's an important aspect. But that's exactly the kind of feedback we're trying to get from people, from the community board as well. Is uh, and it may not be to get the feedback directly today, but I'm encouraging maybe some discussion or further workshop to actually work through these items one at a time and say, where do we need to go on an item like that about maintaining the character? There are some very specific building forms. Um, we've had an assessment done of the character of Mosleka. Uh, by Boff Miskell, uh, and yeah, some very good landscape architects there. Yeah, so we can look at those and say, actually, how, how important is that to maintain that character? And what sort of level of compulsion, or where, where should we sit on that scale of character state? Uh, and and yeah, they that feedback, because we can run that policy if that's the community for you. Okay. Um, Yes. Okay. And the, the, the last document, which I know not so much about, so I'm going to wing my way through it, is uh, um, the um, under our the MPS for freshwater management. Uh, there's a very specific process that the government has identified uh, to, to work its way through. This is where Lisa McGlinchey's team is working on. Um, but as part of this round of engagement, we've got our mountains to the sea document that I've just circulated, and the, the purpose of that document is to take through what are the values, the vision and the values for our fresh water. So that's the first step on this process that the, that the government's quite uh, quite explicitly identified. We have to identify what are our FMUs, our fresh water management units, uh, which I think might be on the next slide, but we'll come to that in a second. Um, identifying a vision for our fresh water and coast, and identifying our values. So we've got an online tool as part of this engagement where people can actually go in and drop a pin. There's a number of values which are compulsory, such as ecosystem health, uh, contact recreation, and so on. But then there's quite a lot of values which are, um, I guess, elective, uh, and, and that we can choose to identify as being important values like new recreation, fishing, um, stock, drinking water, and so on. So that's sort of where we're up to in that document, asking for feedback on those values that people have with the water bodies at the coast. Just got the next slide. Yeah, so these are the freshwater management units which Lisa's team has identified. Um, they're all up for grabs. So these are, uh, are units which will have a similar approach to management. So I think it's for the whole top of the south. Uh, and we've identified, so you can see the Motueka catchment in there, a unit of a body of water, and that's a fairly, obviously, a fairly obvious one. We've got less obvious ones, such as the, the, this northwest coast, Aereri northwest coast. 
which is a collection of smaller catchments, but they would all have a similar management approach. I'm getting to the end of my knowledge on exactly how that, how that um, or what the implications of that are, but there'll be a lot more information in that document that I'll give it out. Um, and then to see the coastal policy statement, again, we don't, uh, our current plan, our TRMP, hasn't ever been updated entirely with the NZCPS. Uh, and then there's various aspects, um, some of which we've speaking referred to, which we uh, have never really been compliant on. And so again, part of work moving towards the TEP will be about moving towards being compliant with the NZCPS. Uh, and this round of engagement is asking those questions there around coastal strategic planning, what activities are appropriate, which are not, and um, oh yes, about the hazards as well. <coughs> so again, that's about as far as I can go in, in that, um, that space. It's not, my, it's not my team doing that one. And I think that is um, this one. Oh yeah, we've got webinars. For those that are interested, we've got webinars. We've actually got one at, um, at 12. 30? 12 o'clock. <laughs> I need to check that. Check it out. It might be 12 o'clock. Um, and then at 7 o'clock um, the following evening as well, if people are interested in a similar presentation. Um, and then there's going to be one specifically on the mountains to see uh, material on the 23rd of November as well. Uh, so that's really it. Uh, in terms of the community board, we're, we're having, having discussions with councillors. And we've discussed the issue, these issues and options um, at length. In terms of the community board feedback, I did a similar presentation to the Motley, sorry, the uh, Takaka Golden Bay Community Board. And I think they were interested in putting together essentially a community board input. Uh, so, you know, workshopping some of this material, looking through the material, and workshopping it as a community board and putting in a not a submission for the policy process, but um, let's say consultation input. Um, so yeah, that's I guess that for the community board, but I just thought it's useful to give you an overview of what the content is, and then you're in a good place to sort of represent the model you're going to be uh, through this process. Questions? Yeah, yeah just through here, I mean, I'll go back to the <coughs> one Claire spoke about, about the keeping of the high street buildings, etc. Um, you may or may not be aware, but the building team just recently done an earthquake to assist the high street. Apparently, they worked. They were building owners, etc. We knew nothing. We were disappointed about it. So I did ask to keep the building because they made some decisions. Uh, but I do suggest that you want to do what to talk to them. Yeah. Some of those might disappear if you're yeah. really having to. Um, so they talk about saving the base of the building and if the old building didn't have to make the building to and then rebuild the new building. But all of those buildings are also on leased land. It's going to make it cost prohibitive. So it's going to be an interesting journey for that part of it. Yeah. Number two about the uh, mountains to the sea with the water. I see that we keep including the National Park area. Well, uh, there is. I can remember quite plainly about 12 years ago we did a water test on the edge of a national park. The water was coming out there, was damn awful. The water going in and we walked away from the wastewater plant was cleaner. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like we, we can do our best, but the talk we mean that we can't control. There's dead animals laying in the creek, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah, okay, look, I, I, I probably can't. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a discussion probably had with Lisa. Uh, Useful, I think, for the public to identify. You know, what are the values they hold for that water, regardless of what's, what's, it, what, what's that vision for our water, and what are the values we currently hold. And that's the starting point for, uh, you know, for moving forward with that. But, yeah, not my area. Sorry. Looking at the um, pressures on the coastal environment. Um, about five years ago, um, the, uh, there was a presentation about the Enviro drains, which um, was the filter, went into the drains so that it was from a lot of the contaminants going into the water. As they've got them at the knee in Nelson. Is that something that you're going to look at in the Tasman area? Um, 
I guess that's, I don't know, I think that's something for our, um, the engineers really, for the asset holders. So in terms of the stormwater, I guess we would be looking at, um, probably tricky also because it gets, um, <laughs> gets muddied with uh, the three water discussion as well, uh, in terms of being part of the stormwater system going forward. Um, so it may not be something that the council has direct responsibility for. Um, <laughs> uh, but it, what, 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 the, what we would be doing is at a higher level setting standards and outcomes for uh, water for discharges. So there's sort of a whole hierarchy. At a high level, it's around setting that vision of values of what's the kind of water quality and what's the sort of coastal water uh, environment that we want. Then that sort of trickles down through the process. So, okay, we set standards. And then any resource consents we have to meet those standards, and then the resource consent holders, which uh, may well be as the district council, would have to meet those standards. And so then they would be looking at what technology they can use in order to meet those standards, and that's where they might look at product like that. So we're not going to be looking at individual products that, that may or may not be achieving. So I think we're sort of seeing that highly quality, and then all those next steps trickle down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess, it's learning from other councils as well because those systems are working in the council. So it's rather than reinventing the wheel, you know, I've talked to my council council and see where they're, where they're using them. Absolutely. I just I'm not a strong engineer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not strong engineer, so we'll be looking at our, yeah. um, we'll be looking after our system. They will be held to, they're, 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 but don't, you know, the direction of the wind is in terms of improving discharge quality. You know, that's just the way it's going through, uh, and particularly through the NBA, the new legislation that has come out. Uh, you know, that's just the direction it's going to go. So the engineers will need to look at those, those products. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, getting used to all this. Yeah. Um, Computer's just gone down. Um, I've looked through the main documents there and I haven't been able to find anything in regards to um, low impact alternative housing. Um, I, I noticed you've you mentioned like Rocks Road and building in uncertain. Um, you know, I love that idea and that's great if you're going to live along the beachfront and you've got millions of dollars, but there's a lot of people in Rocks that haven't got money and the TRMP hasn't been kindly to them. I'm trying to note my words nicely. Um, I haven't been able to get any definitive, are we looking at you know, this part of it? So my question to you, are we looking at changing that small part of the Resource Management Act in regards to what is a building, what isn't, and whether or not you are looking at some alternative housing I, I think it's yes. no. so. So overall, uh, it's, I guess it's not something we've gone into yet. But as I said, with this round of engagement, we're trying to focus on some of the tricky questions. For that aspect, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In various aspects, I've talked about the, um, the lack of variety of housing type. And we've heard that very clearly from the community that there's a the need for smaller housing, there's a the need for um, a variety of housing. And you know, I agree with you. Our current TRMP just hasn't. It's been very much sort of cookie cutter, um, standard kind of housing typology. Uh, I think it's gone down as far as um, 350 square metre lots, a lot of um, but there's under certain circumstances. We have got several kind of work streams underway. But in, in Model Eco, we did what's called the Reader, which is the Richmond Intensive Development Area, which allowed lots down to 200 square metres and encouraged. Um, uh, you know, joined up, you know, uh, joined up buildings, you know, with park and wall and so on. Uh, this is part of, and we've got a similar pro uh, program for Model Week and looking at through the future development strategy and looking at great actually for Model Week and to enable subdivision down to quite a lot of the floor, but also get the design. Uh, in this case, not just that's kind of squishing the water, but yeah, good design too. So, generally speaking, as a philosophy, I think in the built environment, uh, the philosophy is just let people get on with it. Uh, 
in the next environment, the environmental science, we need to pull back, you know, we need to improve things there. Uh, and that's kind of generally the problem the people. But so they just need to be a bit more freedom, a bit more flexibility in the, the built environment, uh, and just focusing on some of the areas such as heritage and the things that people value. Uh, and, and so the natural outcomes and the natural environment um, is going to be higher. Cool. Thank you very much for that, Jeremy. That's right. And I'll see some. Yeah. <laughs> and as we go through the process, process. yeah, cool. and as we go through the process, you'll see. Uh, next year we'll be getting into drafting. So the next stage after that, so we look at the feedback. Um, some stuff is just oh, obvious. We'll be getting into the drafting and starting to look at policy and rules. You have to see the rules that we're putting in place for the various zone. The other thing I should say, which is of interest, is that currently under the TRMP, we just have one zone. We just have the residential zone or the rural zone. We, under the new planning standards we have to move to, uh, we get several different residential zones. So we can have a potentially high density residential, uh, high density residential zone, which may be used in the direction, not sure. A medium density zone, a general uh, residential zone, and then lower density zone. So we can actually tailor different uh, sets of rules for those different zones. Um, so there'll be a lot of mapping work to do, but which parts of my week might be medium density, which are general, which are low density. And then the rules come to implement that and actually allow them to be Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for that. And also for giving you a nice little insight on this big topic. If, if, if anybody wants, I, I guess the other thing I do is just encourage people to get involved. Um, so online, hopefully it's well advertised everywhere. I do have a set of cards. We're just really trying to drum up support, drum up the eyeballs on screen to give us feedback. So I do have, for anyone that wants the cards, which have got a QR code on them, if that's useful to hand out to the body, if anyone wants them, just let me know. And that you can scan it and it takes you to all our online content. Can you some Thank you. You could probably use some from the library. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well. I think mean, might can service in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be great. In a, yeah. It might already be there. Yeah, it sort of might be. People, but yeah, yeah. I'll check. It's probably ahead of me. Yeah. It leads to the question of the um, workshop. Can we take submissions or consultation period permissions before our next um, meeting for the year? So, um, if we, a, we want to have a community board. Submission, this is unofficial, it's not the function type thing. Um, and if so, when are we going to get together? Yeah. Uh, it, may, it may only be for the four elected community board members because council may want to get involved. I suspect the latter because we are looking at more Twitter. Yeah, we could have a amongst ourselves. So, first, is there a agreement we should have a Virtual? Yeah, um, yes. Okay. Um, that would be a great old issue of Sorry, just to interrupt again. We've identified the 12th of December as the close of our engagement, but it's perfectly fine if this come part of that. So I think the Golden Bay is maybe the week after that. We're going to do a, a, a workshop with them. So it's not a uh, end date. So I'm not certain if we're going to come back in December. Would you be happy in January? Would you be happy to come out as part of the initiative? Yep, yep, yep. Exactly. We, can, we can help um, you know, get some moves through these things a little bit less formal, more workshop sort of way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
Oh, yeah, but what, what, what's the information on the system? What good? Yeah. 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 That is good as not me. <laughs> so, um, but the um, 7.2. Oh, Very good. Mr. Chair, it's incredibly hard to hear when you're sitting underneath this thing in that room going at the same time. Um, I don't know if we were up to with the speaker system in here or what, but I'm finding it incredibly compromised not being able to hear people. And I don't need to hear the efficiency that it requires hearing aids because I'm here. Thanks, mate. But this is just a continuous noise. Uh, so, my apologies, Council. I put the blower on in the absence of air conditioning so that we could at least get some air circulating and blowing out through that door. It's now switched off. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> 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 you don't want us to repeat everything that you want. 7.2 explanation of course, affecting the members and their conduct who's controlled by the city. That length and length. So I'm right here, so that's just in my box. <laughs> Uh, Tema Koto, uh, the Local Government Act 2002 requires that the local meeting of the Community Board there be an explanation on the laws that affect uh, members' conduct. The report in front of you uh, sets out the required laws under the Local Government Act. Um, I will take the report as read and available to answer any questions that you might have. In which case, uh, I'm not with the uh, report. Looks like uh, up. all those in favor. Uh, 7.3 adoption of the community board standing orders. Scoop that one too. It's related to this. Uh, um, so you're being asked to adopt uh, standing orders today. Um, I do note that standing orders refer to the chief executive throughout. Um, but it's the chief executive's job to delegate further down to offices and most of the councils throughout the country standing orders will say the same because it's the LGNZ model standing orders that they're based on. So it's very commonplace for them to just refer to the chief executive. Um, there are some optional clauses, and um, in the past, the Motorhead Community Board has had provision for a casting vote for the chairperson. I will note that the council and the Golden Bay Community Board do not have the provision for a casting vote. And I have to hold my hand up and say, your recommendation says the provision of a casting vote, but in the attachment, it says no provision for a casting vote, and that is because we use the standing orders from the original books. So we haven't recommended a change uh, to the provision, but you may want to think about consistency with the council and the other community board and not have a provision for a casting vote. That's entirely up to the board. So those are your three optional clauses there. And I will say you need 75% majority to adopt the standing orders. If you don't adopt the standing orders today, the previously adopted standing orders remain in place. Yes, there we go. Uh, happy to answer any questions. questions? Excuse me, my apologies, Dylan, because I didn't actually read the standing orders, I just read the um, yeah. changes. Yeah. Are these the copy of the council's current standing orders, or are they only yeah. the are the, They are the Motueka Community Board standing orders. Can you describe me to the council that we adopted? Sorry. Um, it was just uh, an ability to set the table. And um, 
didn't need much draft that we were yeah. she did indeed i've yeah. got a feeling that there might have been a glitch there so, so they will be so i can confirm and i'll get emma to know in a minute that they will be the motoreka community board so just through the chair if i could give you a move depending on where you go but an additional cause to reinsert the youth council membership to the community board is not voting member so for clarity, we haven't removed them, it's just this is Vision. this is the correct yeah. attachment, so we'll circulate the correct ones following the meeting and we'll note in the minutes what's happened with the attachment if that's acceptable. Well, yeah. Can you change the motion? Um, uh, to include that. Any other things? What about the casting vote? Do we have a seat available for an evening representative? I'd like to take that up. You will remember that we did quite a bit of work on this for a while last term. That was never resolved at the. What's been enough resolved? Uh, in this pool, in the old board, um, but wasn't resolved in the dry for among the community representatives. We were never quite sure who we were talking to there. Um, so it's certainly something that's going to come up and I don't know if we've got the time to do anything about that right now or make allowance for it. Okay, then, uh, through the chair, um, because you have three. Uh, councillors appointment with the community board that's the max number of um, appointed members that you can have because you can only have no more than half of members can be appointed yeah less than half following up on, on that then what we were looking at for the last term was for a member to be like the um, council representative as a Speaking the non voting, right? And that's we didn't even get that completely resolved. But um, I would be happy to work out something where that could be put in there as something that could happen. Um, there is nothing stopping you amending your standing orders down the line as long as you have that same type of Yeah. yeah. It should be made available as and when we wish for the advice. I agree, but I mean, we can do that three months' time. This doesn't stick for the whole three years. <coughs> we won't be pushing, we're just going to do what we can. Thoughts around that? That casting very fun. Uh, we haven't had no casting vote last time, I don't recall when we discussed the, the previous board, that, that board felt that if we got to the point where we didn't have casting vote, there was something wrong with the, the process and we were working on it. Sounds like everyone, but still we're not quite sure what we finished up with, but the, the one that we're voting on now, the standing orders, does that include casting vote or no casting vote? We're going to no casting vote. And what we will do is Emma will attach the correct uh, standing orders that you've adopted today to the minutes of the meeting. Could you read out the motion that we had voted on, please, Emma? The motion is to receive the You don't need to change the number two you agree. So you've got that the Motorweka Community Board receives the adoption of Motorweka Community Board Standing Orders Report, RNCD 22113, and in accordance with Clause 27, Schedule 7 of the Local Government Act 2002, adopts the Motorweka Community Board Standing Orders as contained in Attachment 1 of the Agenda Report with the following options. The provision of a Youth Council representative to be seated at the table with no voting rights, 
the provision of the ability to join meetings by audio or audio, audio visual means, the choice of option B as the default option for speaking and moving motions. And no provision of a custom. And no provision of a custom. Okay. So that's no testing by the no Yep, we changed that. Yep. The word's being changed in number A, it's no provision. And no provision for an EV to join us at some point. I think you need to have this discussion later on. That's what I'm That's not going to make it seem like that on the hoof. You need to have some discussions around. Next question is which EV? So if I vote for this, does that mean that closes that door for communicating? No, no, no. you can come back and change the standing orders as Elaine has outlined at any time, as long as you get 75% support. So I want to know that I was sworn in at a marae that welcomed me, uplifted me. I don't understand why we wouldn't be allowing that in our standing orders to reciprocate. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying we're not allowing it, I'm saying in terms of process, you've had no discussion on something and a report about it. And you need an officer's report to actually support the decision. Can't make a decision on it. So, can the officers come back at the next meeting with Yes, we can. Yes. Well, it's been shared. Yeah. 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 Just down um, yeah. 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 There's an officer's report comes to walk along the government's discussion about who those EWI groups from what EWI they may be. What we've also heard really strongly is that here we're getting past the fifty week and under resourced. Um, I just I think we um Chair Armstrong and last time had started the soft local conversation that's potentially more fruitful than an officer conversation. Just me this when governments talk to a government's talk and if it happens then you get an officer involved. Most of the talk was with Mariah rather than with all the EV and which ones um, in the Mariah, they were under resourced to, to be able to understand uh, to, to attend meetings or event, event, attend as many meetings as possible. Could I just perhaps in saying that? Um, I'm assuming the table is absolutely welcome to an EV at some stage joining this table. So I've never asked for a Mariah representative, I asked for EV representative, yeah. so that's at government's level, then that's fine. I just don't want the door closed for that. If we could, we could add something in terms of the, you know, the future openness to re exploring. Through the chair. What you could do is add a note to resolution to say that it will be considered at a later date. So it's definitely on the on the table. That's my vote. Thank you. Yeah. And I can say it's certainly might disappear from my um dissolves to our movement certainly happy for that to be happy. Very soon, yeah. Don't remember that again. <laughs> I might pop it up on the screen if you just give me two okay. tabs. Thank you. 
Sorry, I don't deserve to be used to When are going to change it? Here we go. Okay. Just the items D and items. Just cast the line A. Please, uh, may I make a suggestion that you remove the with no voting right aspect from uh, resolution B? That's something that we can address later on. How that can work. Just see the table from stop. Yeah, you see, yeah. So you've got two Bs, that's one is one B. Okay, um, with the motion with the Bs and Sixth and that. All those in favour? Aye. Yes. Aye. Very. Next item is the adoption of the whoops, the native kiosk ordinary what is committee board meeting. Following this way, uh, I don't know why this is here really, but it's down to the 22nd, I think. The 20th, I mean. Mm -hmm. We're first meeting after this. Yep, yep. Two, two, I suggest if we have problems with Tuesday into the future that we take that up starting next year and just for the moment rather than the argument that it's quite a challenge for now. Um, so, uh, this is received a report on yeah. my running machine. Yeah, yes. I don't have the report there, but so it sets the date. Okay. Sets the date there. Oh, oh yes, okay. Draft resolution. Uh, anyone want to speak to it? Someone like to move it? Yeah, seconded. Gary? Those in favour? Aye. Against? No. Um, Pointless to Community Organisations report. Um, this one is pretty important, in my opinion, anyhow, because there's a lot of work that the future we've done, the future we've not done. Um, we work with, mostly with community organisations and some of them have key relationships with council, which um, needs to be monitored. It's slightly complicated by the fact that, and I'll give them light and light, this is the moment for sure, that council, uh, council laws are also um, pointed to these roles um, and sometimes it seems a bit silly that it's like one of each and you put the council are on the same thing and um, to spread the load but that's, that's up to do have the council laws had appointments for these organizations that come here? You have organisations they have, yes. They have, yeah. So you can, as yes, we go through them, you can tell us which ones you may be on. Um, to me, the, the big the main ones are out to almost where you keep on working beautiful at the Museum Trust and the Arts Council, because each of those will rely directly on funding one or another from um, through council anyhow. The other ones um, I'm not so sure about because I've never been involved. So, um, keep those in mind. I think we need to at least get someone on those ones. So, uh, through the charity, I've to my chicken and um, industrial preference just to clarify. <clears throat> I've got no problem with this at all, but I know that the people are trying to pull is 
My question is, can I, as the coordinator of ANTO, also be the rep for the community board, which I have been in the past? And because that role doesn't have a voting right, it's deemed um, acceptable. So I just thought I'd share that. If somebody wants their second Tuesday if the month's free, um, I'm happy to, to do that role. But I think that you're the only one of us who will be caught in any of those situations. I'm not going to keep it. You've got 50 tiers, I was. I'm not going to any more. Um, as Mara, you had some comments on this on the previous period as to what's best. It's the status of the position. So if it's a liaison position or a committee position, then the best I get to get some fun. But um, I have a, I have a, at least it's gone, I have a, a challenge in that the people that sit around this table will be strongly involved in the communities. And I don't see this as a but I see that it's strongly involved in the communities. Um, so if you don't have a peculiarly fighting brain to be looking at someone else and lease a building for someone, I think we've all invested in the organisations in the community. Um, but maybe maybe through the chief executive, my understanding is that it's your conflict. So you decide really if you have any conflict, um, and that's the measure of that in terms of the declaration of interest. Yes, it's um, me, so Mr. Kirby might just look at me with this. Arms crossed. Yes. <laughs> what, what I'm saying, I can't see anything from there. Um, the only complication with perhaps our town of week was a, oh, it's just a collection of a rate. Uh, I suppose my, my advice to you, um, was if she had a voting right, she could potentially be in a conflict of interest situation here. I can see if it was a concern. It's my so is that the same advice for any of these others? If you're a voting right member of a body, are you confident with rather than the liaison employed by yourself? Well, it's up to you to make a call. Yes. My advice to you was if you are voting with an entity like that and then coming around the community board table and making a decision that there's money or something to use that same thing that you voted on, yes. I would say you would have to declare a conflict. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Have we worked through the list thing and um, so do you put your names up or do you want to put your names up for a start and then we'll put the rest? Nick. Okay. Whether or not this is going to require me. Not to make a court users committee. That interests me. Anyone else yeah. want to do that one? Who was on there? Oh. The oh, problem yeah. was it didn't work on any. Well, it's just that I've had a number of people come to me in recent times over a number of things. And I thought, well, if I'm the go to man, at least that um, what is it, legitimizes it. I'm sure well, that you need to actually sort of rationalize it. Like, you just, if you say you're going to do it, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Is there actually a group? No, it's not. It was in hiatus. And there's the between each other, but three separate bodies. That's been the issue over the last few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> so, you know, you. Yeah. Yeah. But that is changing, I understand. They are now managing together. They talk to them. They're talking together. Yeah. Nothing further to do right now. Yeah. Okay, I want to suggestion of Mr. Kirby. <laughs> Um, I suggest we defer this to the next meeting. Yep. And which, perhaps at the time when we have a workshop, we actually quickly come up with the things that we want to offer there rather than all the tears out of the group. Once people see, I'm going to love you. That's all about. That's really, Mr. Chair. So some of these groups I'm already participating in. So I will be continuing to participate. If you defer this, I'll be attending next month's meetings in my current status. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thomas can find his numbers and. Yeah, thanks. So, follow along with the email that I sent him. We're deferring it to next month. It would be good to know when they meet. Is it an evening or a day? Because some of them have had more great decisions. Yes, we might be passionate about their brief, so we might not be able to make it. Let me get that information. Yeah, well, that is, uh, how often they meet. If it's a once a year thing, then as against. <laughs> I just asked uh, Emma if she could collect that for you for the next meeting. How often yeah. they meet, everything. And those of you that do involve, you need to know how often they meet, when they meet, what's so going to be helpful. And we can file all that together. Yeah. That'd be helpful. Could you then do that for the next meeting so that yeah. we can look at it in a few weeks? Maybe the next right. couple of weeks, that'd be great. It'll be helpful to know who was helping earlier, so they might want to continue. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Draft. Okay, so that's deferred. Um, we might need to make a motion for that. We'll just, I'll suggest you do Mr. Chairman's receivers report and then uh, defer, defer the appointment of the board members to the heirs and representatives to the next meeting of this meeting. So we're down to the financial summary action list, the official project list. Um, this may be tuck some of you to the around this time and can see these lists. They show what just going on. Last year and sometimes three years, I suppose, for special projects. Um, and not being fully prepared for this, I will start with the, the financial report. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, I have questions as to what some of that means. Just like clarification, um, I was talking to Councillors and board members last night just to get clarification. But <clears throat> for the special projects, I, I just found it misleading. It says remaining balance is 79,000. But when you look down the list of projects that we are going to be doing from the last week, it comes to about 160,000. So we've only got about 30,000. I can help you, Mr. Chief, with yes. the board member that with me last night. So my take on the quick reconciliation is 179,112 remaining in the bank account. And you've currently got total projects of 148,691 allocated and approved. Which means that you've got an unallocated fund of 3421. Mm. And then you get another 55,000 on the 1st of July. Yeah. That's my quick thing in the library really. Um, yeah. So the remaining balance is actually thirty-four thousand. Thirty thousand four hundred twenty-one dollars. Yeah. But I think there is a slight increase in costs for one of those projects. Um, and we can get the essential projects with so the, the um, financial report, any questions about questions about specifics? In this case, some would like to move, accepted. Yeah. Seconded. 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 If we come up at previous meetings when we want to be decided such and such action will take place. So you have a full last council or something or you know, yeah, things that come up that just um, can be in many cases they're ongoing but not completed yet. Uh, some of them just pop up because they sometimes keep in meaning or are completed. Uh, the red indicates Usually it takes one thing happens since last time. Um, the red here is everything. Perhaps this is best. But again, 
uh, in, in uh, the next meeting on the 20th. Uh, unless there's something, any EU deal, someone needs to react that should happen for a reason of urgency. Update you on the second item on the old um, We've actually got a resource now actually looking at that and yeah, talking to the various groups and compiling a report on the review of the old library and what the options are for that. Yeah. Now we're going to get a draft report. Um, I think it's about the 12th of December. Um, and then we'll review it. I suspect we probably won't be getting the community board until February, um, February meeting with that options report. So just for the chance, so that we'll come to the community first. Correct. Yeah. You expect them to be? Well, yeah, I think it's, I think we're going to be at the 12th of December, which is only basically a week before the community board meeting, so we won't have enough time to actually look at what it steals and get the feedback. Um, so it'll be fair. Okay, Councilor Walker. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Kirby, Queen Susan Edwards is still around. There was an expression on interest list that people have put their names down so lots of different groups and individuals yep. will they all have some dialogue or start to well, say well they're interested yep. the library or the uh, i'll say yes we've got all the information that we put in and that's been given to the resource to actually work through and if there's no if there's more clarity required then we contact it but it'll be based on the information that already indicated to us on what they would like to use like what they like the library to be used for. Yeah. I mean, they may have changed their views since they did the initial one. <laughs> well, that's very true. But perhaps so, rather than try and go through all that now, we'll perhaps go through that in February. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all the people who are the accountable officers are still with us. There is potentially some to take up for the chair. Okay. 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 It was youth council's meeting with Lynn that night at some point. May I ask? And the same job. Sorry, can I ask what's the vegetation letter? Oh, it was um, on the property in the Woodland segment, vegetation coming right out to the Oh, so people could walk yeah. in. Okay. Next one, we're out. Yeah. Okay. So the pork push meant damage and rubbish. Right. Is that what I'm saying? The limit was beating worth. We knock that off or we'll wait for the outcome of that meeting. Oh, you want to the outcome if you want to? Yeah. That's nice. In the uh, Great Case Trail, um, that's the response to the black text. So that's been done. Yes. Okay. Uh, what about page 229, Mr. Kirby? Wait, sorry. I forgot the response to the black text. We've got a chill to send it out. Yeah. I'll start to lose to what you Right. Um, some like to move the um, action report be accepted. I'm not in there, so I'll be Second, then. No. Okay, then. Yes. And finally, the special project sections. Big one that, of course, is the straight part. Yeah. 
could be looking at this, uh, the book, which I got an update that's, that's ongoing there. Is there any update on that? I think it's so. going to be part of the conversation today. Yeah, it's a big gap. So I'm happy, yeah, from Kevin yeah. standpoint, we'll get back to the journey with the team. There's someone else, because then it's, uh, it's not a, don't get mistaken, there's not a fleet, there's not a project, it's about a million dollar project. Right? Mm -hmm. um, it's probably time we've got some energy. Okay. Um, that is the, the cost of that rising now. We'll be with the corporate, yes. So the last stop is we do have, we, we met with another funder in terms of if we need some more funding in the previous part, so that could be what's enough to work with in terms of the program, but it's because there's probably some funding requirements. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm happy if somebody else wants to join me and um, what I can make a with. I'd like to join in on the skate park. It's in, uh, it's in the hut, it's not in the mm -hmm. hut, it's in the hut. Oh, okay. Um, okay. His way, which is back next week, the insurance and to trace. Yeah, because I sort of did the funding part to read with the um, the talking to the property and the dollar and all the golf insurance. Yeah. All right, raise that money. This is the playground ongoing still, there's a lot of ongoing. I just say the playground equipment at the moment uh, start to have any real trouble uh, from the chain from the office of equipment is just completely gone out the window and have been looking at other options within New Zealand on playground equipment. It's very, very expensive. Um, and so it's just a competitive battle at the moment. So that's why not only this one is playground equipment that's that's been around a lot of reserves, uh, particularly in the new growth areas that because it's just involved in that one. I feel for you, Councillor. Okay. I feel for you. Because <laughs> <laughs> not even do it, it's not. You're <laughs> waiting for another review. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the top of yes. the Yeah, the, the ones that. The, I would look at there are all ones from the previous year. We now, as of July 1, a third of the way through projects for this year, and these are the ones that um, are from here onwards in this report. So, uh, let's see if there's any progress on any of these. And they play around the top of Vinci at this four and so on. That was the only one there. Um, so the total fencing, the tax reserves is so sort of this. Why not, why not the parents? Mm -hmm. well, that's, I mean, that's a good question, but you have this as a project thing. Voted in by our community. So that's I mean, we won't debate whether it should go ahead or not. It's a pretty scary thought. That question was asked. Mm -hmm. But I think it was a popular. It's not the most popular, a popular. That's what they were Both of you had two kids here. One was on the swim when you were dealing with her, the other one was just going to be scared to watch the link. So it's a pretty good system so that got me out of the group and so on. It's a long retreat. Here, well, we have got a located person because uh, it's just been a lot. Um, the location here. Okay. So, is that something we should look at next meeting as well? Just really cheer that we were waiting for the reviews of the playgrounds that did reserve. I understand it was a playground, like a feature of the spatial plan. I have no idea who's doing because I think originally it was going to be green. Then started it and then exited and left. Yeah. Uh, Beryl's going to have a meeting. Take a bit on that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
might see the light on that one five weeks. Um, up to, to the well, this one finished. Second one. Thank you to um, this council road and we'll be over there. Like <laughs> Classic. I should have looked up close at that. Um, um, allocating the annual grant to the Marapo Sandy Bay Association is being done. It's a straightforward thing to do. Yeah, the invoicing and then um, do the works and then. Oh, okay. okay. So that's. We pay on the numbers. Underway? Yeah. yeah. So it's underway. Um, um, on to management, landscape management plan for the central. Um, that was one I think was suggested by David Ackleby. Um, and um, I don't know who was going to carry the further forward. Here, yeah, this is a look at these projects now because this obviously puts some pressure on the Reserves to them. I just need to talk to them about their timelines and priorities for all of this. This is another. Is there anything else we've seen in the landscape architect? Oh, it's a case of we have to gate something because the process we've gone through with gates. Yeah. That's just who takes the lead on it. I'd like to talk to my reserves team and see how we can do some of these. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the full part, and I guess just that the complete. Yeah. The walk over was done. This one? Is this one? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'll give you this. Yeah. Likewise, the footpath from Queen Vic Street. Make sure we can make it to the other. The beautification of High Street, that's um, the name of the project that's going to be considered. 15 of the uh, number of plaques for $15,000 and um, the progress was for the uh, Yes, yeah, it's a long, long project. Done the way. Thank you. Um, so let's call the nose. Someone like you need to receive that report. Walker, Secretary Lord Mayor Hutt, always in favour, and against Karen. Um, I think that brings us towards the end of the meeting. Um, so, There's something I want to raise with you after the meeting is closed, but that's fine. Uh, just a comment from the public forum earlier today. Um, some members of the hearing that we were hearing just what Councillor Walker was saying earlier. We're going to do something done there. We'll come here and try to make the sports experience work so people can hear something or whatever. If we do have to have the heat pump going through the summer, which is going to get a good drought, it's not like temperatures and everything. It's going to be a mix of it. Yeah. Can you take a look here? Might be what you can. No? You can, it's not very clear. Yeah. Thanks for speaking with the boom of the voice. You're not going to get it because I could barely hear half of what Jeremy said today because he kept talking to the wall. I don't know whether we think you what we do. I see that the microphones have been put up on the roof and everyone looks at it. Yeah. Better get access to service and get in from there. Yeah. Discuss it up. Yeah. It's just, it's just an ongoing issue. It's a great room, it's a great facility, but there's just a few little healing things that we need to sort out, I think. So, yeah. Probably the perfect time to discuss it is the three people one at the table. <laughs> the, the microphone's <laughs> not going to have any effect to what goes on in the room. No, because it's the Zoom, isn't it? Part of the problem that we've got within the room, as you can see, is that it's well soundproof for these battles. So what you don't get is any echo inside the room, whereas if you go to the service centre where you've got a hot ceiling, uh, you get more reverberation around the room. So there's very little that we can do to alter the acoustics for what happens inside this room. Um, Noted the air conditioning unit was making 
a fair amount of noise and then with the kids outside earlier on having to open the door was not ideal. So let us look at what we could do about that. I think maybe we can do some uh, arrangement of the furniture in the room to better suit how we speak uh, and who speaks. At the moment, there's been no requirement for us to have a, um, an AV system in this room like we have in chambers. If that's something that we think we need, then we can go ahead and, and look at what our options might be about having a, um, a speaker system for members who are present in the room to, to use. Uh, the last time we met, um, the, because I checked with people on the other end of the Zoom call, they had no issues with the sound that's going through to them. So today might have been an aberration in terms of what's going on inside the room and the fact that we had a number of speakers who were relatively quiet. But the, uh, I've tested extensively with people who are on the other end of the call around these microphones uh, and they were working well. Having said that, they should be glowing white and they're not right now. Uh, I wonder if they seem to stop working right here again. Because yeah. I can only hear it. No, I'm just like, so when I'm looking this way, I don't hear it. Just that we yeah, just sitting must be horrible. It's a very loud humming. Yeah. 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 When you sit on this side of the room, it's really like that. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the people who presented at public forum, how are we responding to some of the information that they have taken for us or well, spoken to us today? Yes, the um, youth hub one and the museum one, I took to be providing information and that we, we heard them. Uh, I don't know if to me anyhow we need to respond to that. There's nothing to say really apart from a, a, a um, report will come to the community board to look at and do we? Because of that. May I? Oh, sorry. The holes that heard through what we've got now, I don't know. I'm in a position to um, provide any further information back to him on, on, on the issues you raised. Unless council staff think otherwise. Well, the public forum the way it's set up to spend the audience is that they present, you can ask questions, um, but you can't make any decisions or have any discussion around that. The only thing you can say is that we would like some feedback on how that information is being dealt with, and so that's not something we do on part of the meeting, it's something we need to discuss after the meeting is closed on how that can be dealt So when it comes to the request from Kevin around that resource kit, where does that conversation go to from your presentation that you have this afternoon? My, my recommendation on things like that was the same sort of thing about the question about facilitation. So we've been through a process with the Tasman Environmental Plan, and that can be uh, by advice submissions brought through to the council through the environmental team. The library stuff, a direct uh, discussion with, um, with um, cleaners, and I understand there was some pushback on that. You can go to the manager, which is in this case uh, John Bird. And uh, get a, get some answer on that. There must be a reason why the pushback is there. So my question is, who does that? Will that will that feature on an action sheet? Or? The recommendation is that, that that goes through as a CSR customer service request. Now you may ask him to do it on your behalf to send something through. If the contact details of the person that's raised the submission, um, that's probably the way I would recommend it. Or else we encourage the person to bring up the council directly and uh, and put that same request in. Uh, I'd like to make a recommendation that we communicate both the museum and the youth hub people and just provide them with an update on what is happening now. So at least we're not ignoring them, so to speak. I know, it, I know we're not ignoring them, but if we just said this is where we're at for the moment and as soon as we've got this report, we will present it to you. I, I, Again, probably the matter of who does that, whether he hasn't done his thing, or I do as chair. Well, it doesn't need any specifics, it just means look, we are awaiting a report because that's obviously what we're doing. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Y
Well, the request from the museum was quite wide. We yeah. don't think they didn't mention the old library. They were wanting a building. And yeah. that's, a, that's a wider discussion that the councillors need to raise with the council um, through an annual plan process or a long-term plan process. So that's not just something we can make decision here and now. That's going to require some further work on it. So that would be the recommendation is the councillors hear that. They take it on board and um, and raise it with the team when the, when the long-term plan is being, being discussed and options being discussed. The projects will be included. But for, for me, what I was meaning is not so much like this is what we're going to do, or this is, it was more about getting back. This is what's happening. And the, you know, a report has been on the future and you know, the issues that we're facing, just, just an update to at least know we're doing something. I think that's. My comment on this is um, thinking about it quite a lot in the last few days, but certainly following, well, Following the meeting we had um, the four of us, the four community board members, uh, met with and uh, yeah. there was some things that were important to us. Um, but it's not not new. But this is this has come up in the previous um, community board meetings. Uh, and Councillor Walker had a small component of this. Um, I've been thinking about it and trying to work out how we can set up the framework of guidelines on how we can deal with all these things and I've put it down for myself in the project um, which I've already started on home um, on preparing some guidelines that we can agree on with, with council it's not going to break standing orders or even threaten them or anything like that it'll just add to them as a, as a framework where we can say this is the sort of question that was raised in the initially was raised in the public forum or in the some correspondence that came to us, it's another thing that we um, don't necessarily discuss in the meeting. This is what we would do. Um, so, so, such and such a person would write some, a certain sort of response to it for the street or that sort of thing. So I do uh, want to do some preparation on that and bring it to everyone and bring it to the council um, senior staff as well to make sure that would well, work. I want to work on that. Um, certainly hearing what you're saying, what Councillor Walker said for a, a, a long time before this, what we talked about in the community board values. That's my contribution at this point in time. Well, for me, it's certainly public and forum, public forum is, I believe, quite important. And so we, we do need to just at least acknowledge when someone speaks. And sort of, even if we're not, <laughs> so we don't have to say, look, yeah, we're going to do this. But at least we need to acknowledge them. And okay. that's why we've got the form there where they've got their contact details and we can say, hey, we heard you. Thank you very much. Um, and if there is something we can offer, we, we certainly can. We can't change, you know, the forestry overnight. But, you know, we can certainly listen. This idea. It's largely a matter of what you can within the meeting and what you can you write to that person and tell them? I think that's the same thing. May I address the CEO if possible? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Through the chair. Can right. we wait till after the meeting? Oh, oh, I would like. I would. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything to do with the uh, No, I was just going to thank Okay, all right. Uh, I'm unsure of when we do all this sort of thing. So I just guide me along, guys. Well, I mean, the standing orders is the what if something's on the agenda, you can discuss it at that. Um, reason being is that we don't want to have um, information put in, decisions made without actually thinking through and working through the, the uh, repercussions and the consequences of it. So, standing orders are set up, and that sounds very bureaucratic, but to protect yourselves making decisions that have consequences that are perhaps unintended, we've got to work those things through. So I Chair, just to carry on what Nick was saying, just to clarify, so I don't, I don't completely agree with what he's saying is, so is there an action now for a letter to be sent from the Chair to those people just to say, thank you very much, we are getting this report and it, we're receiving it from you just out of courtesy. Yeah, well, it's not that, or we call the customer service request and you do it as part of the 
Okay. So this is the end of the the end of the the end the end of 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 the the end of 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 the Thank you for that ongoing support. Without that support, people would be with our operational requirements with the New Zealand to control the area. It's a very significant contribution. Should be acknowledged, and I do that today on behalf of the control. Okay. Let's get down. Let's talk to a tattoo. The Atuai or Tato Ariki, Ihu Kiariti, Te Aro Te Aroha, or Te Atua, Ite Inga Tangitanga, Ite Marakutapu, Ake Ake Amene.